Welcome back to Nysora YouTube channel. Today we will be talking about wrist block, but we will be using an amazing new learning tool, which is called the Next Level Nysora. So we will demonstrate how you can use this new platform to make your own notes and enrich the material with your own videos or stuff that you find on internet, PubMed, YouTube, anywhere, and keep it all together connected to the section that you are learning. So let's get started. Wrist block. The wrist block is one of the most useful regional anesthesia techniques that is probably the best anesthetic choice for most hand surgery and particularly anything on the digits, the foreign bodies removal, the retained hardware removal, carpal tunnel syndrome surgery, anything. This is really the sleekest technique you can actually do as long as the surgeons can use a tourniquet on the forearm because long tourniquet time could be problematic because the wrist blocks occur typically on the distal part of the forearm. For this explanation, we're going to go to the newest Nysora e-learning resource, which is the next level Nysora. Let's go to Nysora's compendium of regional anesthesia, which is one resource on it. And in here, we have a whole range of different techniques, but today we're going to talk about the wrist block. So if we now open the wrist block in the Nysora compendium, here we can see the ulnar nerve, the median nerve, and the superficial radial nerve. But don't worry about this because we're going to be going over this material in quite a bit more detail in a short bit. So let's review the anatomy. In order to get this block done properly, it's really very important to understand the basic anatomical principles, which are the part of the functional regional anesthesia anatomy that we teach uh, in the compendium. In here, we have the cross section or forearm that is at about this level here. And what we see is the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, and a superficial radial nerve. These three nerves anesthetize entire hand. And the most important aspect of this reverse ultrasound anatomy illustration, which we do in Nysora, is that these nerves are enveloped or sandwiched in the fascia sheets that belong to the superficial and the deep flexors of the digits. So when you want to anesthetize them, your needle has to go in between those two sheets. And there's a lot of different tips that we will talk about as we go through this particular process. But if you know this technique, you really can shine in the hand surgery room any given day. Let's start with the technique of the median nerve block. This is the transducer position, and here you can see the transducer is positioned in between the wrist crease and the elbow crease. And that's where we start the scanning. And the block can occur at any given level between these two structures, but the more distal you go or in the middle of the forearm, closer to the middle of the forearm, the better, the better it is. So this is the reverse ultrasound anatomy animation, which is probably one of the best tools to learn the sonoanatomical patterns. You see, you have these folks that when they place an ultrasound probe on a patient, they seem to get image instantaneously. They recognize what they need. And there's folks that take forever to recognize those images. The difference between someone who is very quick and slick at recognizing sonoanatomy and someone who takes a lot more time is that the first group, the people who are fast, they actually have sonoanatomy patterns ingrained in their brain, which really means is when they place a transducer probe on a patient, they're already expecting to see a certain sonoanatomical pattern. And that helps them to recognize that pattern immediately. This is what these animations actually do. As if you watch this, we start from the ultrasound image, and here we can see the, the median nerve and the fascia sheets around it, but then we take the viewer with this animation into the illustration. So now we know what is what on this particular image. And then we take the viewer back to the ultrasound image. And an idea here is that you want to really memorize these patterns. So when you place the probe on a patient, you're expecting a certain sonar anatomical pattern, which helps you then instantaneously recognize it in an actual patient. 
This is the actual image that we talked about, but now I would like to demonstrate very briefly the principle about these blocks. So that's the median nerve over here, but these are the fascia layers of the muscles above and the muscles below. We need to recognize these sheets so we can insert the needle in between these sheets of the superficial and the deep flexors of the digits. And the injection occurs here. It does not occur around the median nerve, but in the place, in the sheath, in the facial plane that contains the nerve. This is very important because when you sonogram the median nerve, you need to apply some pressure on your ultrasound probe. But then, while that helps you get the anatomy, it is very important to release that pressure at the time when you start injecting. Because as long as you keep applying that pressure on the probe, you will not allow the tissue to breathe and therefore the local anesthetic cannot distribute around the nerve because you're impeding it with the pressure on the probe that is not necessary. So, apply the pressure for the anatomy views and unload the pressure when it's time to inject the local anesthetic. So let's do the block. Here we can see the probe position like we demonstrated. That's the needle insertion in plane. And that's another example where you can also do needle insertion out of plane because this is a very superficial block. Median nerve block can be accomplished by either way. But the bottom line is that you want to get that. And that is that the needle is positioned in between those tissue planes. And this is very important. The novices always tend to focus on the median nerve, on the nerve itself. But the experts tend to focus on the structures around it because what we are interested here really is we're interested in these tissue planes. We're not necessarily interested in the nerve itself because we will not be injecting around the nerve but in the plane that contains it. So that is really a very important point that if you can take that with you, you can take it to any nerve block for safety and for the efficacy of the nerve block procedures. So that was the median nerve block. Let's now review it. Here's the proposition. This is the image that we're trying to get. That's the reverse ultrasound anatomy. Here's the technique that shows plane injection. And that's the needle position that we're trying to accomplish. So that's the position of the probe for the ulnar nerve block. Here we can see how the probe from this position has slid more medially. So here's for the median nerve. That's the probe position for the ulnar nerve. And as we continue here, we can see another reverse ultrasound anatomy animation. And this is just an amazing tool that helps you recognize and memorize these sonantomical patterns. So here we can see the ulnar nerve and the artery. And again, we're really interested in these tissue sheets around because that is really where you want to be with your needle. Here, 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 there, but not around the ulnar nerve. An injection in between those sheets is what we really are aiming when we perform the ulnar nerve block procedure. Let's go back to the next level, nasora.com. And here's the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve. And we're going to perform this block now in plane. Again, we can use in plane or out of plane techniques, but here for this purpose demonstration, we're going to do an in plane technique. So the most important part in learning these blocks is actually understanding what we are trying to accomplish. And again, those are the fascia sheets, that's the ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery, but the needle wants to be placed between those fascia sheets. As we previously mentioned, you may have to apply some pressure to get the images so you know what the anatomy really is and where we need to place the needle, but by the time the needle is placed, we need to slack off the pressure as much as possible to allow the needle to be in plane. And number two is to allow the tissue to expand so we can accomplish the block by opening that virtual space with the local anesthetic where the nerve resides. Let's review the online nerve block one more time. That's the pro position on the medial side. Here we can see the image that we're trying to accomplish, ulnar nerve and the ulnar artery and the fascia sheets around it. And this is the logic behind the block, that we want to place a needle in plane or out of plane between the tissue sheets that contain the ulnar nerve. What we are left to do now 
is the radial nerve. So we're going to go to that section on the next level nisora.com. And here we can see that the probe has been moved to the lateral side. So the arm is now like this. And that's our placement of the transducer here. We can find the radial nerve, superficial radial nerve, that is, anywhere alongside this axis. This is the ultrasound image that we're trying to obtain. That's the radial artery, and as the radial nerve lateral to it, that is the radius over here. So now we can see how the radial artery, radial nerve, and the radius bone relate to each other. As you scan more distally, eventually the radial nerve, superficial radial nerve, would go over the radial bone, but we will see that later in one of the one of the images. So that's the reverse ultrasound anatomy. Again, an incredibly powerful tool to learn the sonar anatomical patterns. Because if you go back and forth, it takes you between the ultrasound image and reverse ultrasound anatomy. So we can ingrain these sonar anatomical patterns so that we know what to expect every time we position a probe on, on the patient. So let's do the block. Here we opted to do an in-plane technique. And again, this is the pollicis right here, the thumb. That's the ultrasound transducer. And again, the block can be done anywhere alongside this path over here. This is an in-plane insertion of the needle. And here's, again, the reverse ultrasound anatomy that demonstrates what we're trying to do with the block. So that's the radial artery. That's the superficial radial nerve that is inside the fascia sheet and that's the radius as a bone. So all we want to do really here is place that needle into the fascial plane. And again, this is a very superficial nerve. You really have to slack off the pressure to allow the local anesthetic to distribute around the nerve. Because if you apply any more pressure, you will not be able to get that spread. You will obliterate that virtual space and this will present a problem in the distribution of the local anesthetic. Okay, let's review the superficial radial nerve block. So that's the transducer position. That is the radial artery and the superficial radial nerve next to it. That's the reversed ultrasound anatomy and explanation of what we're trying to accomplish with this particular technique. And for copper tunnel syndrome surgery, you also might need to inject local anesthetic subcutaneously. And that is because even though the median nerve and the ulnar nerve will anesthetize everything that we need for this particular block, you may still have branches of the mascocutaneous nerve passing in this direction. And therefore a small injection subcutaneously of two or three milliliters of lidocaine will take care of that possibility. And let's now watch the video of the entire procedure. Here at the end of the section on the next level nisora.com, we have a section with videos. So that's the video of the block performance. There's more videos on reverse ultrasound anatomy. And there's a lot of these cognitive priming videos that again, allows us to understand exactly the principles what we're trying to accomplish with these approaches. So let's watch this. So that's the video of the procedure. I'm going to start the video and the first thing that we're going to see in the video here is the position of the patient for the wrist block or really it's a forearm block or the block of the median ulnar and the superficial radial nerve. So here we can see the equipment that we use, it's usually 10 milliliter syringe filled with 2% lidocaine or whatever local anesthetic you uh, need, depending on the duration. And we typically use a 25 gauge needle. So let's start with the median nerve block. Here you can see the probe is positioned between the elbow crease and the palmar crease. And what we want to uh, select here is a depth of usually three to four centimeters, something like this. In most patients, the depth of the ultrasound is about three centimeters. We have an interosseous artery that accompanies the nerve, which is not the case always. And that's a 25 gauge needle, which is really probably the best tool for this. Even though it's not stimulating needle, it's actually the least traumatic and does not result in a lot of local bleeding or pain. So that's the needle being placed in plane and we're aiming for this particular spot here. Here we can see the needle enters the sheath and we can see how the median nerve is being pushed back with injection of the local anesthetic. 
Okay, let's move on to the ulnar nerve block. Now, once we accomplish the median nerve block, all we want to do is scan more medially. So the transducer is simply slid more medially on the medial side of the forearm. And here we immediately see the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve. And again, these are the tissue sheets that we are really interested here. The superficial flexors and the deep flexors. They make these fascia sheets where the ulnar artery and the ulnar nerve reside. And that's where we aim to inject the local anesthetic. So again, it's not a very narrow injection, but it is an injection into the sheet that contains that particular nerve. We're also going to use here an in-plane needle insertion. Again, the choices can be either way, in-plane or out-of-plane, but the idea is that we want to place that needle into that fascial plane. And this is the insertion of the needle. And once the needle is that plane, the local anesthetic should displace the ulnar nerve from its current position, away from the needle and away from the local anesthetic. And here we can see how simple injection and that fascial plane can basically accomplish the block with the one single needle placement, which is the goal with most of our techniques that we teach on the next level, nysora.com. And that was it. The wrist block for any hand surgery and surgery on the fingers. You can do a lot of different surgery with these very simple techniques that are highly effective and reproducible. Now let me demonstrate to you really cool feature of the next level nysora.com platform. What is really cool with this platform that you can make your own notes. So if you make your own note, uh, a browser comes up here that allows you now to, to type and insert additional material from various sources. Let me explain. I'm going to give you a quick tour through the next level nysora.com. I can create really incredible notes that supplement the information in the Nysora's compendium of regional anesthesia. As I take a new note, I title it as a wrist block, and then I go to the bottom of the chapter to use a built-in tool and search internet for any additional images or cognitive aids that could help me better understand or easier memorize the information about wrist blocks. As an example, let's say I like this image. I simply copy paste it into the next level nysora.com. And now that way that image is in my note. I can also search for any website that features the wrist block. As an example, I like the Nysora website, nysora.com. And let's say these images are important to me. So I can copy this image as well and put it into my notes. Again, I go back to my notes and I paste that image, so now that image is mine as well. Let's say this text over here is also important to me. I simply copy the text and go back to my notes and put it into my notes, just simply paste it. Now that information is also in my notes forever. I can also copy this link here so that next time when I come to my notes, I will know that that wrist section on Nysora website is educational. I simply click on the link and it takes me directly to that section of the website. So I don't have to memorize where I found that information. That specific hyperlink to the wrist block on the Nysora.com is now in my notes. Let's say that I want to search on YouTube whether there are any additional information or videos that may be useful to me about wrist blocks. As I scroll down to the YouTube videos using the search built into the next level nysora.com, I'm going to find something that I feel is easy for me to memorize. Here's a video that I like on the radial and median nerve blocks. I'll copy the link to that video and I simply paste that link. And now that video is mine as well. It is in my notes. And what's really cool about this is that I can actually watch the video directly from my notes. I don't have to leave the next level nysora.com. If I need new literature on the wrist blocks, I can search the PubMed search, which is built in into the next level nysora.com as well. So I can search for recent relevant literature on the wrist block. So let's say I like this article about the wrist block. 
I simply copy the text that I find useful and I paste it to my notes. I can also go back to that website with the article and I can copy the link to that article and I put it into my notes. So that way when I have my article hyperlinked, anytime when I need more information from that article, I don't have to remember where I put that article. It will always be there in my notes. So we title this important article. I insert the link and now it's there. Let's now save the note. As I save the note, it's really cool that I can now go to my dashboard and review my notes. And when I click on my last note that we just made and I open that note, I can see that I can read the entire article. I can see the images we inserted. We can visit the websites, the link to which we created. I can watch the videos directly from my notes and I don't have to worry about where I store the images, where I store the additional information, algorithms, whatever cognitive aids we find in any other resources and we put them in the notes. They're all there. I simply insert them into my notes and they're mine. About the notes, I can watch the videos directly from the notes. I can see everything that I ever wanted actually in my own notes. I have the hyperlinks to the articles, I have hyperlinks to the website, and if I close this, we can quickly return to the lesson or to the section of the chapter where we took the notes from. It is so easy and very organized. And when I go to the lesson, I can find all notes that I took related to this particular section. Here, I can edit my notes, I can print my notes on a printer, I can save them as a PDF and share it with my colleagues. I can also combine these PDFs of my notes to make my own notebook in PDF or printed. It is simply an amazing tool that we built into the next level Nesoro.com that we can use to enrich the material that we study or make it even more personalized by inserting our own ultrasound videos and images from our own practice.